Thank you, choir, Barbara, and T, once again. Thank you for the wonderful music today. Uh, I just got a note up here that tomorrow is Caitlin Hogg's 14th birthday. So, Caitlin, we wish you a happy birthday, and we hope you have a great birthday this week. That's wonderful. Hope we didn't embarrass you too much. Happy birthday. Well, today I want to talk to you briefly about a life of thanksgiving. And I invite you to hear these words from the Old Testament book of the Psalms. We're going to be in Psalm 118, beginning with the first verse. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me, and I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation, and there are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I remember being in preschool and having to dress up as a pilgrim for our classroom retelling of the Thanksgiving story. You know, we had like the little hats and the little costumes that you had to put on. I don't know if I really understood everything that was going on, but uh, I know that I looked cute as that little tiny pilgrim because I was pretty cute back then. Something has gone horribly wrong as I've gotten older, but back then not bad at all. I remember we got to have a Thanksgiving feast together as a class and how fun that was to eat and celebrate together. Uh, That meal was a wonderful picture of Thanksgiving because there we were, kids from all different backgrounds and different, uh, you know, home situations, different races. We were all joining together around the table to give thanks together. Of course, we know that Thanksgiving is a national holiday. It's not just a day off from work or school. Though that's sure nice to have, isn't it? It's not just a time to pile our plates high with all those foods that we're looking forward to. Though that sure is going to be fun to do, isn't it? It's not just a day to sit around and and watch the Detroit Lions play football. And they usually lose when they play on Thanksgiving. But they're pretty good this year, so they might have a chance. We'll see. The origins of Thanksgiving in the United States can be traced back to the early 17th century when the English pilgrims were seeking religious freedom and reform, and they arrived on the Mayflower and settled in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620. The pilgrims faced a harsh winter that year and struggled with food shortages, and in the fall of 1621, they celebrated their first successful harvest with a three-day feast, which is now often regarded as the first Thanksgiving. They were joined by the Native Americans who helped the pilgrims to learn how to cultivate the local crops, and they all celebrated together. The tradition has continued on throughout the years. In 1863, during the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national day of Thanksgiving. And then in 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed a bill into law establishing Thanksgiving as a national holiday to be celebrated on the fourth Thursday in November. So that's the story of Thanksgiving and we remember and we cherish the national and religious freedoms that we all get to have and all the blessings that we enjoy because of this land that we call home and when we stop and think about it we realize how much we really have to be thankful for, right? We are thankful for life, for food, for friends and finances. We're thankful for cars and houses and clothes We're thankful for family and good neighbors. We're thankful for medicine and doctors. We're thankful for police and firefighters and EMTs. We're thankful for soldiers who sacrifice so much. We're thankful for schools and teachers and places where our kids can learn and grow. Now, we know deep down that we might not have everything that we want to have. 
we're always wishing for more, right? We always wish that we had more stuff, but we have a lot. In fact, we have more than enough. And we know this applies to our spiritual blessings as well. We have the blessing of God, God wanting to be a part of our lives. We have the blessing of God's love, the gift of salvation. There's a classic hymn that puts it like this, Count your blessings when life's billows upon you are tempest-tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. When we stop to really think about God's blessings, we are overtaken by surprise and joy. We try to count them up one by one, knowing that we will never reach the end of the list, because God's blessings are always over and above what we can even wrap our minds around. And so, in response to that, the psalmist encourages us here to live in gratitude. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. We are grateful that God's goodness is real. Even though sin is all around us in the world, even though we experience heartache and pain sometimes, we know that God's goodness is real and that it is something we can always rely on. Now, did you know that things don't always work out the way you want them to in life? Have you ever experienced that? Things do not always go the way that we want them to go. But even in the midst of that, we can still give thanks because of the goodness of our God. We believe that God is relentlessly for us, that God is with us, that God will never leave us or abandon us. Therefore, we can trust in his goodness. We can trust that he wants the very best for us. We can trust that his way is always going to be better than our own way. We are so blessed to have a God who is so rock solid, so stable, so dependable. And with the Lord on our side, who should we fear? No one. No man. No one. No matter what we might face in this life, no matter what might come our way, no matter what challenges might arise, if God is for us, then nothing is going to overcome us or overtake us because God is on our side. And we are called by the writer here to take refuge in the Lord rather than putting our trust in any human beings in this world. Uh, he was really speaking to the political realm here. Don't put your trust in politicians or, or worship them or bow down to them because we know none of them can save us. The Lord is our strength and our might. He has become our salvation, and in him we will have all that we need. So I want to take a moment today to look at some of the key blessings of God in our lives and how we respond to that work with thanksgiving. First of all, we are thankful for what God has done in the past. We can go back to the very beginning of the Bible with this one. Remember what Genesis 1 says, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. All of life itself is a gift of God to us. The world would not exist without God. We would not exist without God. Sometimes we like to think that we are self-made people. We like to think that we have made our own way in the world and that everything we have belongs to us. And that is mistaken thinking, of course. We are not self-made. We are God-made. Everything we have doesn't belong to us. It all belongs to the one who made us. And as Psalm 100 says, know that the Lord, he is God, and it is he who made us and not we ourselves. Church, God is God. We are not. We belong to him, and everything we have belongs to him too. What about a four-year-old boy who was asked to say the blessing before the big Thanksgiving meal? The family members bowed their heads in expectation and he began his prayer thanking God for all of his friends, naming them one by one. Then he thanked God for mommy, daddy, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, all of his aunts, all of his uncles. This was turning into quite a lengthy prayer. Then he began to thank God for the food. He gave thanks for the turkey, the dressing, the fruit salad, the cranberry sauce, the pies, the cakes, even the Cool Whip that goes on top. Then he paused. And everybody waited and waited. After a long silence, the young boy looked up to his mother and he said, Mom, if I thank God for the broccoli, won't he know that I'm lying to him? Maybe you're not a fan of broccoli either. I'm with him, not a fan of the broccoli. But whatever vegetables you might not like, maybe we don't have to thank God for those. I don't know. 
But all the other stuff is fair game, isn't it? We are thankful for it all because God made it and God made us. In the past, we're also thankful for God sending his son Jesus to be our savior. We were called up in our, our sins and our trespasses with no hope of ever rescuing ourselves from that. But God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. He came to our rescue. He sent Jesus into the world in the flesh to live among us, to go to the cross and to save us. And it was there on the cross that Jesus accomplished our redemption. He died for our sins and he was resurrected so that we too might be raised to new life. And we are filled with awe and wonder for all that God has done for us in the past. Next, we are thankful for what God is doing here in our present. Did you know that God's work was not just confined to the past? God did not stop working after sending Jesus. God did not clock out after the work of the cross and say, my job is done here. No, God is continuing to work in our lives right now, even this very moment. You might remember, after the resurrection and after the ascension, God sent the Holy Spirit into our lives. And God's Spirit does the work of drawing us to God, leading us, guiding us, helping us to grow, showing us the right way to live. And the Holy Spirit is a good thing for us and for our lives. And we should not be afraid of the Spirit's work. Jesus told the disciples one day, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate, the Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and he will guide you into all the truth. The arrival of the Holy Spirit and the work of God's Spirit in us is something to be celebrated and cherished. Because God is not done with us just yet. God does not write us off as a lost cause. God's Spirit is on the move, making us into who we could never be on our own. I love the story of the boy who was riding his bike outside a church before the Sunday services one morning. The priest saw him out there and told him to come into the church. And the boy said, well, somebody's going to steal my bike. The preacher uh, explained to him that the Holy Spirit would take care of it. And the boy seemed to buy that explanation. So they went inside together. And the priest started showing the boy how to make the sign of the cross and told the boy to repeat after him, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the boy repeated, in the name of the Father and the Son, amen. The priest said, well, boy, what happened to the Holy Spirit? And that young lad replied, he said, well, sir, you of all people should know, he's outside taking care of my bicycle. The Holy Spirit might not prevent our bikes from getting stolen, I don't know. But the Holy Spirit does watch over our lives. And the Spirit continues to work and move in our lives even today. And we can trust in the Holy Spirit's work to to lead us out of sin, to lead us to the love of God, and to help us to get better at saying yes to holiness and righteousness. So we're thankful today that God continues to work in our lives through the power and the presence of his spirit. Well, finally, we are thankful for what God will do for us in the future. As Christians, we believe that this is not all that there is. We believe that salvation is not just about the present world, it's also about the glorious future that God has promised for all who are in Christ Jesus. As Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, if, the, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Folks, Christ has been raised from the dead, and we are promised to join him in resurrection as we belong to him. That means that each of us has a future beyond this life. A future that comes from God. A future where we will be with God. Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. But that means he won't be the only one. He's going to bring us along with him. We too will spend eternity with the God who made us. The God who loves us so dearly. The God who moved mountains to save us and to make us his own. Now, I know that we sometimes have a hard time trying to wrap our minds around what eternity might look like. I mean, the Bible does not give us a crystal clear image of what heaven and new creation are going to be like. I wish I knew those answers and I could tell those to you, but I don't. But I do know that God 
is mighty and powerful and wonderful and delightful. I know that God made the sunrise and the mountains, the ocean shores and the stars in the sky. I know that God made the rivers and the flowers of the field and all the universe and the galaxies therein. I know that eternity will be grand and glorious and we will be with God together. A man arrived at the gates of heaven. St. Peter was there to meet him and asked him, denomination. The man said, I'm a Methodist. So St. Peter looked down at the list and he said, go on in, head down to room 24, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. So they went in. The next man stepped forward, same thing, denomination, Lutheran. Go down to 18, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. Third man stepped up to the gates. Again, the same thing, denomination, Presbyterian. Go to room 11, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. The man says, uh, the next man finally got up there and he said, you know what, I've heard you say this same thing to the people who were before me. I can understand there being different rooms for different denominations, but why do I have to be quiet when I go past room 8? St. Peter looks around and he finally whispered to him. He said, well, the truth is the Baptists are in room 8 and they think they're the only ones up here. They're not the only ones up there. None of us are going to be the only ones up there, right? It doesn't matter what denomination we're in. It doesn't matter who we belong to. We're all going to be there with God together, even with people we might disagree with, even with denominations we might disagree with. We will all be united with that common bond of loving Jesus, living for God's kingdom, and allowing God to make us into his people. And I believe that we will all have a good time together in eternity with God. There will be no suffering, no pain, no violence, no sickness, just pure bliss with our eternal creator and redeemer. So we give thanks for God's work in the future. We know that he's not done yet. We know that we are not done yet. There is a great and glorious future in store for us all as we give our lives to Jesus and live for him in this life. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving celebration this week. I hope that you get all of those foods that you are looking forward to. And I hope that we'll all take time to remember and to give thanks for all of the blessings in our lives. We all have so much to be grateful for and thankful for. And we remember all the spiritual blessings of God as well. We have such a wonderful God who loves us so dearly. And our great God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are invited into an entire life of thanksgiving. Not just one day a year, but every single day for the rest of our lives and beyond. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so grateful for everything that you have given to us and all that you have done for us. We celebrate your blessings during this Thanksgiving week. We thank you for everything and we celebrate you. We, th we thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all of your many blessings. And we pray that you will fill our hearts with gratitude and joy and hope this week as we celebrate together. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.